Over the last three years, I have quit YouTube three times with various degrees of severity. The worst, I guess, would be when I completely filmed a goodbye video and was about to release it when I got turned around, brought back from the brink. Shout out to Jules. But this time, things are looking a little more grim. So here we are at the front of Mount Sunday, Edoras in Canterbury on the South Island of New Zealand, one of my favorite places in the world. And we're gonna have a little chat about the future of Zorbazorb. Before we moved to New Zealand, about 65% of my income was from my online store, ZorbaZorb.com. Once we moved, we of course had to automate that, which created a whole bunch of business costs. Obviously had to hire my lovely manager, Mark, who runs the shop, but also there were just a heap of unforeseen business developments. The Ukraine war, affecting shipping prices, and just a whole bunch of increases. And the shop, which previously made 65% of my wage, swung to losing me about five to 10% of my wage, which is just, Massive, so obviously that's not sustainable, that's not tenable. That basically means that the first thing on the chopping block is my online shop, which was really heartbreaking. It was kind of a little empire that I built over about five years. In two weeks time, Zorbazorb.com will close forever. Uh, but if you want to help, uh, I still have shitloads of stock that is just going to be sitting there as a waste of money. So if you feel like buying some gaming supplies, <laughs> go and check out Zorbazorb.com, but only for the next two weeks. To complicate matters, on top of my shop absolutely dying, my YouTube channel's views tanked for the whole last 12 months. Everything basically since the Osgiliath mega board has been a financial disaster. So not only is the shop revenue gone, the ad rev from YouTube is gone and sponsors for most of the year evaporated. And so that means that my Patreons Man, you guys really just kept me alive. You became basically all of my income for the vast majority of the year, or at least most of it. And the amount that you guys mean to my family's livelihood and the ability to do this is incredible. So thank you all so much for your support. I, I, I don't know how else to say it. I, I would have quit six months ago, if, if not for Patreon. I wouldn't have been able to pay for anything. So obviously something's got to give, and I really don't want to stop. I don't want to change the way I'm making stuff. I still want to make really high quality content. I think, you know, big, amazing builds that you guys really like and things that I find artistically nourishing. But I can't really keep doing this um, as is. So I have a plan. I've just come off my, uh, my one month of paternity leave uh, and, and I'm, I'm about to begin the new year and I've got this, this kind of slate of dream projects. Finishing my massive Horus Heresy campaign, my Minas Tirith builds, a whole bunch of other epic Middle Earth locations that I've always wanted to tackle, as well as my huge map of Middle Earth at 28 millimeter scale. I want to get that done so I can check those boxes before I potentially leave. On the 1st of February, 2025, I've got to look back at the year and is this financially sustainable? Am I providing for my family? At the end of the day, that's what this has to do. And if the answer is no, then something has to change. Maybe I change the way I make my content. Maybe I change what I'm making or maybe I change my career. So one year, one year is my commitment for some mega content, just like you're expecting and hopefully well beyond your expectations. I will do that, but after that it might be quits. But it's gonna be an epic year, so don't bail. <laughs> like, stay with me, right? I need your support, not just my patrons. Obviously, you guys, please don't go anywhere, I'm f But everyone, like, I think you guys are really gonna dig this year. I'm not trying to be mega doom and gloom. I just, I just think that it's nice to be open about this stuff. Often, everything's so hidden. I don't know. I don't wanna struggle in silence. And if this is the last year, of Zorb Zorb, I think you guys should know in advance so you can savor it. We need to kind of put our best foot forward and, it's, and, and put a plan in place and smash this year. So let's get the hell out of the South Canterbury Islands and get back to the studio and get ready to tackle the biggest year and maybe the last year in Zorb Zorb history. So the main issue with making crafting content is it has a pretty poor time in, money out equation. It's kind of much easier to just sit in front of a camera talking, slagging off various companies, which I've just realized is exactly what I'm doing now, except I'm slagging off myself. <laughs> When you make the crafting content I make, it's basically the central flaw in my business plan. Everything I do takes so damn long. Time in, money out, it's a bad equation. So 
you know, failing making crap content more often, which I've just said out on Edoras that I don't want to do for the next year. I do not want to cheapen my content. There's only one thing we can do to help improve the math and that is to maximize efficiency and make the most awesome crafting studio possible. When we lived in Australia, efficiency was a massive problem. Longtime viewers of the channel will remember that I had a tiny, tiny little bedroom, which was the crafting studio, the editing bay, and then I had an off-site storage unit for my massive scenery collection. When we made the move to New Zealand, the number one priority was finding a house that could be the perfect launching pad for Zorpazorp's success. So today, we're going to get my studio ready to tackle this massive year for Zorpazorp. And when I knew I was finally going to take the time to try and fix the absolute chaos of my current setup, it was the perfect opportunity to give the whole space a big glow up as well. So I reached out to Displate last week and told them about my plans. They threw their support behind this relaunch of Zorpazorp and had five absolutely gorgeous, one-of-a-kind metal posters on my doorstep within like five business days. They had a heap of awesome options to choose from. There's Warhammer stuff, lots of kind of custom bespoke art, but obviously I couldn't go past the Lord of the Rings stuff. I had these exact posters on flimsy paper as a kid. To see them passion printed on metal by the master of production is just so cool. There's a kind of unique, safe, easy magnet mounting system, which is just really user friendly to install them, and it makes positioning them on the wall really, really simple. So I'm actually so floored by these. They just look phenomenal. I've obviously still Still got this little Sauron and I don't know I thought like he could go up above like looking down on me or maybe even in my office sort of watching over me swap him around maybe I want Aragorn they're so easy to adjust links are in the description grab some displays for yourself one to two when you get 22% off but if you get three or more you get 33% off everything you buy it supports the channel hopefully this plate will keep sending me more of these things <laughs> so let's leap back to the very beginning of this journey in March of 2023 welcome to Zorpazorp HQ building number one we've got this fantastic working bench this was all built in it's got great bones but there's a lot that we need to do what some shelves we might start doing that today and we'll get all of my supplies on there within easy reach so this bad boy is room or building number two which has two separate rooms in it office number two is the live streaming studio and then in office number one this is kind of where the the off-screen magic happens it's time to get these in working order and start bringing Zorbazorp HQ New Zealand to life. So we had an amazing foundation for Zorpazorp HQ and even though we ended up out in the middle of the New Zealand wilderness to find a house that suited the needs of the channel, it has been worth it. Back then I got stuck into trying to make the most efficient space possible but it basically all fell apart pretty quickly. In the office all I managed to do was set up my computer on a dinky trestle table. In the streaming studio I made a little bit more progress setting up a decent hobby bench I got dirt cheap second hand and then the amazing photo folks over at Hobby Zone sent me over a heap of these amazing MDF organizers and I assembled a bunch of modules, paint racks, drawers, brush holders and built up this awesome little setup which has been super useful over the last year. You guys will have seen it in a bunch of videos. A big shout out to Hobby Zone. They've basically been the only thing keeping my hobby space functioning this past year. Then of course I made our gaming board for this live streaming room. A big double sided beast with the perfect grassy middle earth texture on one side and a modular tile system on the other, which could be anything from Moria to Mordor depending on what tiles I build. If you want to see the journey of that project, I'll link it down below, but unfortunately that's essentially where the streaming studio build stopped. Since then it's just become a dumping ground, the streaming board is literally being used once and is now dumped up against the wall in my garage, and to be honest, the garage didn't get much further either. First of all, a big shout out to the New Zealand Customs Authority for not incinerating all of my scenics at the border. All of this stuff has just come straight out of the tubs into Ziploc bags and some of it looks rather dodgy, but it all made it here. So we've got our scenics and we've got our tubs. I shipped them over because Tupperware's expensive and I've been using these tubs for years and I love them. They're great. I grabbed all of my various ingredients and got them all tubbed up and then salvaged some old fence palings and upcycled them into some shelving. This was just meant to be like a short term cheap solution, but they're actually still going strong today. And then I just dumped all of my sheets of foam up in the roof or up against the wall. And that's as far as the main studio got. 
So everything you guys just watched happened in March and April of last year, and it was actually surprisingly difficult for me to edit. It, I was just so full of hope and enthusiasm. I had no idea that I was about to have this just awful year of business. The moving costs to New Zealand just blew out massively and we ran out of money. All of my hopes and dreams for this incredible space ground to a halt and the mess has been piling up. So let's finish what past Lockie started and get Zorbazorb HQ at maximum efficiency. Starting with finally getting the streaming board into the streaming studio. And then it was time for some shelving in the corner to give me that perfect place to store all the various setups that I'll need to run the gaming table. This won't just be scenery. I've also got a lot of armies on the go at any one time for filming Dawn of War Warhammer battle reports or SBG. And then I started migrating in my small scale scene out from the garage, starting off with my modular desert tiles and this big Gondorian castle from Andy Tucker. I packed that all up onto the new shelves and then threw down the modular Moria layout with some sweet Durak Deep buildings from Conquest Creations, flipped the board over to green mode and slapped down all of my scatter terrain. Between all of those three setups, I should be pretty covered for a bunch of gaming experiences for Middle Earth. I slapped together a second shelf for the editing office for camera gear and kind of bits and pieces and then mounted a whole bunch of acoustic foam in the main recording booth to try and improve the voiceover for you guys and then it was back to the main studio and my really big job here is this gorgeous hex tile map of Middle Earth. I gotta get it up off the floor. It takes so much space when it's laid down flat but it could be an amazing backdrop if we can mount it to a wall. I 3D printed a whole bunch of extra edge tiles, oceans, plains, forests and even made a custom coast still half tile for my two beaches where they join the top and the bottom of the map and then I glued that all down to complete the map edges. I then touched them up with a bunch of different paint finishes to get them matching to the rest of the map and then knocked up a custom wooden frame from pine to support the four modular panels. A bunch of liquid nails and then screws hidden behind some hex tiles and the board is finished. This is going to be so cool for our big massive Middle Earth campaign. I mounted him up on the wall and it's just such a great feature of the workshop now. Then I got stuck in and gave the rest of the garage a massive sort and clean. I'll get some really nice steel shelving when I can afford it next month after my next Patreon payout, which will take all the bigger builds and get them up off the floor. So that is a massive improvement across Zorbazorp HQ. I've probably improved efficiency by about 5%. Now that might not sound like a lot, but I basically don't make any money on a video if it gets less than 100,000 views. In the last 12 months, only 6 out out of 30 videos have hit 100k, but if I could lower that target by 15% to 85k, then I jump up to 11 out of 30. Now that's still not great, but at least it's moving in the right direction. I've been, I've, I've been really scared to make this video. I don't want to come off as entitled. I'm, I'm not entitled to your views. I absolutely have to earn them. And I am working so hard to make good content that earns your views. I, I work like 80 to 85 hour weeks. I've got three kids under four. I literally can't work any harder. I have to work smarter. And that's really what this whole video has all been about. Um, just, yeah, I mean, honestly, if you guys are still watching at this point, uh, 15 minutes of me moaning. You guys are the legendary viewers and all I can really say to you guys is thank you. If you want to support this next massive year of Zorbazorp, there are three things you can do. Right now, you can head on over to Zorbazorp.com and just buy up all my old stock. All the money that is tied up there can then be reinvested in storage facilities and scenery and straight in to future videos. Secondly, you can join Patreon or become a channel member. I've banged on enough in this video about how insanely important my patrons and members have been. Uh, without those guys, this channel literally would not be here. And third and finally, when I have sponsors, get on after them and, and support the sponsors that support me. So go and check out Displate. They're linked down in the description. Their stuff's amazing. You've seen it already. Love that. And, and hopefully, uh, we, we'll be able to keep sponsors more than just the tiny Christmas window, but throughout the whole year. And if you can't do any of those, that's okay. I get it. Money is tight. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, it all helps. I'll be back in a week or two with a massive update for the Imperial Palace. And all I can say for now is thank you so much for sticking with me and I hope to see you again soon. If you want to help support this next, next, that Kiwi accent's coming on.